Yo, 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 it's Joe from Photos with Phones. Today we're here to do a moment lens review. All five lenses, everything you need to know. Let's go. Hey, that rhymed. It rhymed. So, during the course of this video, we're going to talk about a couple things. How to mount moment lenses. And what the heck is an M series versus O series lens? The differences between all the moment lenses and the tech specs and pros and cons of each moment lens. If you're here for a particular moment lens, go down into the video description and you'll find chapters that'll take you right to the lens that you're looking for. We'll also talk about why I would buy each moment lens, like if I wanted to do landscape photography or portrait or macro. That's kind of obvious, but you get the point. And finally, a moment lens is worth it because let's be honest, that's probably what you're here to find out. All right, so mounting your moment lens. If you buy a moment lens, you have to buy a way to mount it. There's no other way around it unless you want to rig something together yourself. But as far as I'm concerned, there are four options to mount your moment lens. Let's talk about them. The M series case. I'm a fan of them. I bought like four of them. They're good. The M series lens adapter. I have not bought any of them and the reviews are kind of iffy. So the beast cage from beast grip. I'm a big fan of that one. If you want to learn more about it, check out the video up there. And finally, the Beast Grip Pro Lens Adapter, which is similar to the Beast Cage, but not made out of metal and universal, so you don't have to just like buy a different one for every phone that you have. All right, let's talk about the differences between those moment lenses. Future Joe is going to do a little drawing on the whiteboard to show you the difference in all of the focal lengths and what that means as far as how much field of view each lens has. And then even further, Future Joe is going to show you a time lapse that perfectly illustrates what slightly Future Joe drew. Wow. So we'll start with the 18 millimeter wide lens. It's gonna have an equivalent focal length of 18 millimeters. Who would have thought? It's gonna have a 0.63 times magnification when compared to the standard lens on your phone. The working distance on the moment wide lens is going to be three quarters of an inch. Working distance is the minimum amount of distance that you can be from your subject to get focus. As for the size and weight of the moment wide lens, it's gonna be 76.2 grams. And you can see how big it is in comparison to my coffee cup this morning. So yeah, that does make it on the heavier side of moment lenses. So let's talk pros. The moment 18 millimeter wide lens is going to be the best beginner, mobile photographer and filmmaker lens for moment. Because it makes things just slightly wider, it allows you to capture more and crop down if you'd like to. It also is a good option when you're getting into video because it makes everything wider and allows you to capture more. And when you're first starting, it's kind of difficult to do all of the spacing and stuff like that. So this kind of makes it a little easier because you get more and then you can crop down, even though the resolution and stuff isn't as good because you're cropping down. But that's beside the point. It's good for that reason. Being said, the cons are kind of gonna be the same things. Because this lens doesn't do anything super, super impressive, it kind of doesn't always make sense to attach it when the lenses on your phone are pretty sufficient. Now, with all that being said, if you don't have the moment 18 millimeter wide lens, it's probably worth picking up just because it is so versatile. You can do landscapes, you can do stuff in cities, you can do portraits, you can do product stuff. It's really, really useful, even though I don't use it as much as I used to.
Next is the 58 millimeter Tele. As you probably would have guessed, it has an equivalent focal length of 58 millimeters. That means when it's attached to the main or wide lens on your phone, it's going to give you two times optical zoom. And then when it's attached to the tele lens on your phone or tele lenses like my iPhone 11 Pro, it's going to have a four times optical zoom. Before you get excited about all of those possibilities abounding with all of that optical zoom, it is worth noting that the minimum working distance for this lens is going to be seven and a quarter inches. So you do have to be relatively far away to get focus with that zoom so it really isn't as useful in terms of like close-ups that's just something that i didn't necessarily take into account before i picked up this lens and when i got it i was a little bummed as far as size and weight are concerned the 58 millimeter tele is going to be pretty similar to the 18 millimeter wide lens it's going to weigh in at 73.1 grams though it does look slightly bigger so let's talk pros of the 58 millimeter tele Lohman claims that their tele lens increases the depth of field and compresses the image, which kind of just increases the bokeh, which is the blur behind your subject and makes the background of the subject appear closer to the subject than it is. That's why the tele lens is very popular for portrait photography. And in a past video about the moment 58 millimeter tele, I had somebody comment because I didn't talk about it because I wasn't convinced that it really happened. Um, and I commented back and said that I kind of agreed. And now I'm a little bit backtracking because I do kind of think that it does it though, not as well as I might have hoped. I'll let you be the judge of it, kind of seeing the footage from the tele lens that I've been showing you while I've been talking about it. As far as cons of the lens, it has to be that seven and a quarter inch working distance. It just, like for me, I feel like the lens would be so useful in like a way more close up. Like all the other lenses have a working distance around an inch and it would be awesome for the tele lens too as well. I'm sure that there's some sort of R&D physics science that I don't understand. But I do have to come up with a con, and that's a con. Let's move on. All right, moment 14 millimeter fisheye. Equivalent focal length on this is gonna be 14 millimeters, which means it's going to have a 0.517 times magnification. Wow moment, that's very specific. Now, if you watch the whole video and haven't come here via chapters linked in the description, then you might notice that the 18 millimeter wide lenses magnification is very similar to the 14 millimeter fish eyes magnif fish eyes fish eyes magnification. And at this point you may be saying, which one do I want? And I would say for photos, you would probably want to lean towards the wide. Whereas for video, I would recommend leaning towards the fisheye, especially. I think it's a great vlogging lens and talking head lens. It's what I've done all of my talking head on my iPhone on for this whole video because I really like it. Plus then you can see Jazz. I'm pretty sure she's in the picture. She's napping now. As far as the working distance for the 14 millimeter fisheye is concerned, it's going to be 0.63 inches, which is the least working distance of any of the moment lenses, which allows you to get this cool effect by getting really close with the fisheye. As far as the weight and size of Memon's fisheye are concerned, it weighs in at 73.1 grams, though it's comparatively pretty small. I'm kind of doubting that it weighs in at 73.1 grams, but I don't have a scale. So, all right, let's talk about the pros of the 14 millimeter fisheye. It's such an ideal option for those that want to vlog on their phone that I just can't stop talking about it. That being said, the cons of the 14 millimeter fisheye are going to have to be the fisheye effect, because if you don't like the fisheye effect, then you're probably not going to like the lens. It's worth noting that the moment 14 millimeter fisheye's effect is less substantial than the Sandmark 10 millimeter fisheye. You can also adjust the fisheye effect in the moment pro camera app. I'm not going to go into depth about how to do that right now, but it is worth noting that it can be done. All right, let's talk macro. 
Moment's 25 millimeter macro lens is going to feature 10 times optical zoom when mounted on the standard or wide lens and 20 times optical zoom when mounted on the tele lens. It's going to have a working distance of 0.69 inches to one inch, which means you have a very small window of focus that is kind of a bummer. And the result, for me at least, just kind of makes using the macro lens just a little less fun than I might like. That being said, my best fix for using the macro lens is to have the macro lens on a stable tripod and then bring whatever you want a macro to the lens. It just ends up with better results. Trust me, I do this. As far as the weight of the Moment Macro Lens, it weighs in at 34.7 grams and is pretty small. It does come with the light diffuser hood that you see there, which does make it bigger, albeit not much heavier. Let's talk pros and cons of the Moment Macro. Pros of the Macro are simple. You get 10 times and 20 times optical zoom on a triple camera setup like I have on my iPhone 11 Pro. While that optical zoom sounds nice, there's such a limited window of focus with the Moment 10X Macro Lens that sometimes it can be a little frustrating to find. Now, let's move on to the Moment 1.33 times anamorphic lens. It is worth noting that we will be talking about the blue flare lens because I don't have the gold flare lens. Hey Moment, what's happening? We can go down a serious rabbit hole when talking about anamorphic lenses, but the main things to note, and these apply to the Moment 1.33 anamorphic blue and gold flare lenses, that 3.3 just means that the image is being squeezed. It's how you get that widescreen look. Now, to get those black bars, you will have to de-squeeze the footage, and there are certainly a lot of ways, but the best ways that I know are just to de-squeeze the footage as you're shooting it. I do it in the Beast Cam app. I can also do it in the Moment Pro Camera app. And though I don't use this app, Filmic Pro does it as well. Once you've squeezed that footage, you get what is called a cinemascope aspect ratio, which is a 2.4 to one. If you compare that cinemascope aspect ratio to the 16 by nine aspect ratio used in the rest of this YouTube video, then you see why the anamorphic lens for Moment is great for mobile filmmaking. Cause it's cinematic, yo. Speaking about cinematic, I told you about those black bars and how to get them. These lenses are also going to give you lens flares. Mine is going to give you a blue lens flare. Who'd have guessed it? It's very Michael Bay-esque, but it's cool nonetheless. The gold flare will give you a do you have a guess? Are you guessing? What do you think? What color will the gold one do? Yeah, it does gold. The Moment 1.33 times anamorphic lens is gonna weigh in at 37.6 grams and is gonna have a square shape as opposed to the circular shape of the rest of the lenses. And last but not least, we'll talk about the pros and cons of the Moment 1.33 times anamorphic lens. The pros of this lens are obvious. It gives you cinematic Hollywood style results. Now, while the results of the Moment 1.33 times anamorphic lens are good and, in my opinion, better than the Sandmark 1.33 times anamorphic lens, it is sort of unfortunate that you either get the blue or the gold lens flare. You don't get both. For a lot of people, $150 is a lot to spend on a lens. And the fact that you have to buy two Moment anamorphic lenses to get both the blue and the gold effect is sort of a bummer. And the fact that this is the case it makes the Sandmark lens preferable to a lot of people. Now, let's talk about why I would buy each Moment lens. I'd buy the wide lens if I was a beginner, into real estate, into landscape photography. I'd buy the tele lens if I was into portraits or wildlife. I'd buy the fisheye if I was a mobile filmmaker, especially into vlogging, or I liked action sports or music videos. I'd pick up the macro if I was into product photography and video, all the small things, textures, and me personally, I, since getting the Moment macro lens, have kind of gotten into doing like macro movies. Um, if you want to see one of those, check out the link up there. And I would recommend picking up the 1.33 times anamorphic lens if you like mobile filmmaking or retro style photos. Some other things worth noting about Moment lenses. All Moment lenses come with a microfiber bag. All Moment lenses come with a front lens cap but do not come with a rear lens cap. You'll have to purchase that separately if that's something that you want. All Moment lenses did come with a lifetime warranty, but I just checked the website and it's two years now. So 
I probably should fix all of those that are now wrong on the website. You can buy cases for iPhone, Samsung, Pixel, and OnePlus devices. And all Moment lenses are constructed from aerospace grade metal and film quality steel. Moment also has their own app called the Moment Pro Camera app, which I have intentionally not talked about in this video because that would just make things super convoluted. But I would definitely be willing to talk more in depth about the Moment Pro Camera app if that's something that you would be interested in. I did shoot this video on the Bscam Pro Camera app from Bscript just because I like its functionality better than the Moment Pro Camera app. Just trying to be honest here. So if you also would like the Moment Pro Camera app, head-to-head -head versus the beast cam, then I can make that happen. That's all we got for you. If you feel like you got value from this video, go ahead and hit the like button down there. It definitely helps photos with fans out a lot because it forces YouTube to show our videos to other people. Comment down below and let me know which moment lens you're into, or if you're not into moment lenses and think they're a bunch of steaming crap, let me know. Yeah. As always, subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell, because we're coming out with twice weekly mobile photography and filmmaking, tips, tricks, hacks, reviews, unboxings, anything that you would want to know if you like taking photos and videos with your phone. Toodles. See you in the next one. Bye.